Hi, folks. Welcome to Google Plus Week. I'm Dan McDermott in the Metro Bentonville, Virginia area. Uh, joining me from New York is Mr. Alan Furstenberg. Alan, welcome hey. as always. Always glad to be here, Dan. Okay, so we have a lot to, lot to talk about today, and there were uh, quite a few changes this week, and we appreciate them rolling them out right before each episode. Uh, I guess the first thing was that Hangouts on Air are now worldwide, except in uh, just a few countries. And this was a big thing. Hangouts on, hangout on Air, Hangouts on Air, um, that's the plural form, like attorneys general. But uh, the, the, the idea is that you can have a, a Hangout like we're using for this show, and you can broadcast it live on YouTube, and it records it for you. Um, and then also there are some other things, some enhancements, including the ability to join one from a mobile device. So we're going to talk about all that stuff. Also, I'm going to talk to uh, Harold Carey. Uh, he's, he's got a gripe about uh, Facebook versus Google Plus and the amount of engagement he gets. We're, we're going to discuss whether that's a, a fair critique on that particular post. Uh, I don't think it was, and he does. So we're going to we're going to come to blows on that. And um, let's start with this uh, the, the new stuff, which is so exciting, Alan. Um, let's talk about Hangouts on Air and, and, and uh, what they've been doing with them. They have, this week was, was a, a really great week for Hangouts. Um, it sounds like all of their, their summer interns are, are heading home. Um, so they got all of the summer intern work uh, done and released and out of the way. Uh, so that was pretty exciting to see. Um, but the first and, and the, the biggest one, I think, is the fact that um, you can now start or join a Hangout on Air from uh, everywhere in the world except for three countries. And that's just, just amazing and huge. You know, so now, uh, ex unless you're in China, Thailand, or Vietnam, you're able to create or join a Hangout on Air. And this is, this is great. This is just wonderful. We've been looking for this for a long time. I know that, that, that they were, they were, there were workarounds that some of the folks were using um, to get past the barriers with proxy servers and that sort of thing. But um, I know that in a lot of cases, I think it was, it was when we had Vic Gondotra on, he said this was in many cases a, a copyright issue because the penalties for copyright infringement um, you know, are more severe or enforced differently in different countries. And uh, they could have been held liable, apparently, but it didn't get too specific. But I guess they've conquered a lot of that. Um, so did they say why in China, Thailand, and Vietnam they don't have it? Um, my understanding, they didn't come straight out uh, and say so, but my understanding is that the reason why they were more restricted from um, the European nations particularly was just they were, were having trouble wrestling with the EU laws and, and the German laws. Um, and I'm assuming that in those three countries, particularly given the three countries indicated, the broadcast laws are even more restrictive. And they just didn't want to try to deal with the, the various censoring and filtering issues that were required. Okay. All right. Um, and then I guess they also... I'm seeing a new topic added as I speak. Um, you can join... The, that's a big deal, I think. Yes. The ability to join, uh, you can't start one, but you can scam that too. You could use a program like Spreecast. Dan, why don't you say what we're talking about here? Um, you can join a Hangout on Air, a broadcast Hangout from a mobile device, a tablet or a phone or what have you. Uh, there, were workouts, there were workarounds. You could use a laptop and you could use, use a mobile hotspot, but um, now you can actually, from your phone, you could be, it's great for news because we've always referred yeah, to this. Android only, right? For now, is Android it a certain only. version of Android? Because I have Gingerbread, but I haven't seen the ability. Is it just when you get a notification to join a Hangout? Because I don't see it in the stream. It still says unsupported on my phone. Um, I, I wonder if, if uh, you have the newest Google Plus. I think it's Gingerbread, isn't it? I mean, I have the update. I was like one of the first person, you know, I can talk well, about the update when it came out. Well, go ahead. I just and, don't see it in stream. Uh, go ahead and and um. Go ahead, Alan, and, and, and talk, and I'm going to look on my device in, in Google Plus and see if I can, uh, what the deal is. That's a good question, and I don't know. I haven't seen any of the release notes indicating whether this was for um, 4 o and up only, if this was for, you know, if this was for ice cream sandwich and up only, or if this was for uh, gingerbread and up, or what. I've seen it, I've 
jo I've seen people join Hangouts from Air. Um, I don't know the latest, uh, the ones that work. We have uh, a comment that just came in. Let me uh, let me share that one. Um, yeah, I think one, Alan. One of, I... our, one of our users shared with us. Uh, let me show that here. Mm, let me show that here. Uh, Carlos said that uh, they had Gingerbread, the latest Google Plus mobile app, and it worked for them. So uh, there's a data point. Uh, always, always tough to tell and bring, you know, diagnose whether we've got problems or not. But there's at least one other person saying that that they were able to do it. Okay, I, um, just to clarify, I'm on my device. Uh, this is a Motorola Photon, and I have the join, the blue right there. I have the join Hangout option, but above that, if you go to my profile, um, mm -hmm. you'll see the, the folks who are in in the callers one group. Um, who are in the Hangout, you'll see a Join Hangout button. But the very first, it says Hangout with eight people, and then it says this type of Hangout isn't supported on this device right now, but then below that, I have an option to join it. So you want to see if you if you have the same experience there? So you're um, getting yeah, conflicting messages. Yeah, yeah, that's why I have to, same thing. Yeah, so you, can, you should be able to join from it. But, um, okay, so... Um, uh, any, so th any other thoughts on the mobile and... and but, let me let me let me go to a question that we got uh, from uh, from George Cozy. He asked a great question that I'd like to take to the rest of the group and get everyone's opinion on as well. He asked, "So, is this Hangout thing a global broadcasting system? So, between uh, the ability the ability for you to join a Hangout Air from your mobile phone and the ability to um, that just about everyone in the world can now use it, what does everyone think? What what do we have from this tool now?" Yes, absolutely, it is. I think, as a as a news person, um, I could I could be in a parade. Craig Ship frequently does. He's on his Segway. Um, you were just doing that, Craig. Let's talk about that. You, you were just at a parade. Uh, I guess just a couple days ago or last weekend uh, in Frederick, Maryland, for your uh, Frederick dot com site, and you were getting some excellent video I saw. I haven't had a chance to comment on it, but it's very good. It's it's basically like um, uh, the quality you would get, you know, from the, I forget, I even have one, the the thing with the weights and the pole and the belt, you know, the steady, the steady cam. cam. Yeah. Um, yeah. You were getting that kind of result on your Segway, which is a very sturdy, high-end, the best scooter you can get. Uh, and you're able to zip around in the parade, and it was fantastic. So you could have, you could be, uh, uh, once it happens with your iPhone, um, once the iOS uh, update comes, because this time, I think last time you guys got the first update and Android was shortly after, and, and this time it's the reverse. But they're clearly working on it. And a lot of the big Google Plus guys use iPhones. I think Chi Chu, who's the creator and boss of Hangouts, uh, lo loves, you know, uses an iPhone. Um, but you'll be able to be on your Segway and you could start a Hangout from um, your home. And you could be on the Segway and, and be broadcasting live from your iPhone up and down the parade. I think this is a huge thing. Anybody yeah, in the world really, can watch we it. We really need to be able to start the Hangout with the mobile device um, just because of the, you know, you, your computer going to sleep. You know, are you there, that, that deal? Um, so once we're able to do that, once we're able to start the Hangout on the mobile device, then absolutely, it would it would save a lot of time and effort if I could stream the the event live and record it all at the same time, and then maybe go up on YouTube later and do a little bit of post editing. Um, yeah, I'm all for it. Anything that can save time, get the content up right away. Yeah, I think it's fantastic for for news events, um, for uh, for anything that you know people are interested in. They can't be there physically um it'd be great to have like maybe the presidential debates if we could have some hangouts going on um someone at the hang actually at the debate with a mobile device broadcasting the debate because it's always copyrighted content so you're not allowed to stream it but you could actually have the thing the, the actual debate from a mobile device in the hangout and then afterward you talk about it and maybe have that then that person who was at the debate can weigh in on what it was like physically there. Uh, there are all sorts of uses for this. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be a great a great feature. Um, I like Bamboozer for a CDN for other video streaming. And this week, there were people streaming with their mobile devices using the Bamboozer app in front of the Ecuadorian embassy uh, and all of that that was going on with Julian Assange. And then there have been people that were live streaming with their mobile phone in front of the uh, the courthouse in Moscow where they were adjudicating what was going to happen to this uh, all-girl punk rock band. And what, what's, sort of the, what's the name of the band, Bruce? <laughs> are, are we allowed to say that on air? <laughs> I'm yeah. just messing with Bruce. I'm messing it's, with Bruce. I, this I is like got the name sex in it. <laughs> well, like when when remember when John Wayne Bobbitt uh, got hacked off by his wife and that brought up a, a word into normal conversation that you never would have said in front of your grandmother you know all of a sudden there's no way to discuss it otherwise this is strange but yeah i heard they got some game bruce maybe you can watch some of their videos and, and get back to us on that um <laughs> but that's kind of crazy two years for uh i don't know but it, make, it makes your point and and now to be able to do this like craig said to be able to start a hangout on your mobile device would be really great or, or to do it the way you you said you know maybe even have it a, a producer back at your home that's running the hangout and so when the yes button pops up, are you there? You know, they can take care of that and uh, do some switching for you. I think it's got great opportunity. Um, okay. Before any, any other comments or do we, Alan, do you have a comment you, you, you wanted to throw up there from someone or uh, no, we've, I think Harold had a comment. Yes. Uh, well, I know many of you may not know this, but I'm going up to the Navajo reservation for the Miss Navajo pageant at the, at the Navajo state fair. One of the one of the events there is the all the women in the contestants have to butcher a sheep, and so I was wondering if you'd like me to broadcast that live. Uh, would that work with my phone? Would that be interesting to people? Wow! A beauty pageant where they have to <laughs> slaughter an animal. Yes, or butcher they, it. they have that. to actually that butcher is, it. There's actually pictures on there's pictures of last year's sheep butchering uh, on the internet. <laughs> so these ladies are not too sheepish, then I assume. Oh dear, <laughs> um, that's funny. That's uh, that's really bizarre, uh, Harold. Um, maybe uh, for Pageant Live, Craig, you can um, Craig. you can uh, gut a cow or something, and and, and all the, the pretty girls with their crowns can. Uh, um, yeah, that's uh, you run with an interesting crowd, Mr. Carey. Um, but okay, absolutely. So, cover cover that live, absolutely. Yeah, that's. I will. Uh, I'll, I will cover that live for you guys. I could be. Uh, I could see Peta doing a, a competing hangout. Um, but uh, okay, so um, um, okay, so I guess what's next here? The next major change was that uh, they announced a new um, kind of a, a mode for hangouts on air. So that uh, for under certain circumstances, you'll be able to broadcast at a higher audio quality using a, a better codec, uh, sacrificing some some other bandwidth issues for a really really high quality audio. And and they've done this because they've seen how musicians have really taken to hangouts on air. So we're now going to be getting uh, what they call a studio mode. And in studio mode. Uh, the participants will, assuming none of the participants are um, are mobile, which is actually an interesting twist based on our, our last report, um, they'll be able to broadcast in a much higher quality audio. It'll be recorded in this higher quality audio, and people who are watching the stream and taking part will be able to hear uh, the the better audio transmission. Uh, do we when it initially came out? It was being tested if anybody didn't have the right version of Google Talk, the right plug-in, it would bring the whole hangout down. But is that the case now? Or is, is it, uh, I could be in studio mode, because I tested it and I was singing and stuff, it was fun. But if someone had joined mobile, because uh, now you can join a hangout on Air Mobile. I, have we I, tested that? Do we know if that will bring it down? I have not tested it. I do remember seeing somebody comment say that that was an issue. Um, that if if the mobile person joined, then the quality went back to to standard quality, um, and that if somebody joined with the older plugin, that they would again be the 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 audio would be downgraded. Um, but I haven't seen further testing on it since it was 
uh, in in the past couple of days, I haven't seen further details. But it's really amazing, and they have um, that video with with the is it, uh, Sweet Seven O Nine is the band where they were showing. Um, they're a really good band, and they were showing the regular quality and then the studio mode quality, and it was it's just night and day. I mean, it's like a yeah, you can a, definitely hear the difference. Yeah, because initially they were using a the regular Hangout that you're in now is uh, designed for optimal speed and low bandwidth and the um it also has uh how do, how do i describe it this hangout is very forgiving as far as echo cancellation stuff like that in the studio mode you really need to have headphones on because you will get feedback and squealing because it just doesn't have um it's really good quality but it's not designed for regular talking they said so uh that, that's interesting um and so, so, I would encourage so, everyone to try it, you, but it only works in a Hangout on air, and you start the Hangout, and then you go into your settings, and you switch be, where, where you would turn your, like, choose your camera or your microphone input. There you have an option, uh, voice or studio mode. Um, but you will get CD quality audio. Um, and then you you had a question or a comment, Craig? So, so real quick, um, if everybody... Except for the person singing, if everybody else in the Hangout mutes their mic, does that negate the the feedback issue? Um, yeah, that would, sure. So the person singing would not have to have headphones on? Well, I think that, I, I don't know, we'll have to see. Uh, we could try it later. Um, and we can, you know, I'll, we'll try it again. I'll crank up the karaoke. Maybe Bruce can uh, bust out some guitar or something. But Alan, you had a question from a viewer or comment? Yeah, we have a viewer comment. Uh, Joshua asked, uh, thought it was really cool about the audio, asked if there was a link for it. So I have provided here uh, a link to the post announcing it. Um, I would also remind people that we publish our show notes and we have links to everything that we discuss in our show notes. And so Joshua, uh, sorry, Joshua, the the screen is not live clickable. I regret that we, we don't have that technology working yet. Um, but hopefully you should be able to copy down the short URL and check it out. Okay, that's oh, cool. Oh, I like the fact that he said yet. Does that tell us something is coming? I wish. <laughs> something is always coming, Craig. This is Google+. Plus. <laughs> See, Alan knows all things. Yes. Um. I can't say how quickly it's coming, but it's something is always coming. This is Google+. Plus. Yeah, so if you're watching it later, just look down and you'll see the link. That's the link to what? That video I was talking about or to the announcement or what is it? That uh, is the link to the announcement, I believe. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, it's, it's a must-see video. It's only about a minute, but it's just a – it shows you the dramatic difference in quality. And it's fun. It's fun to do because before it would just – for singing or playing music, it really wasn't – how – Bruce or um, – as any – are you able to be in diff? Is the latency s short enough that you're able, to, like, could Bruce play guitar and I could sing to it, and someone else would hear it in in sync, or would that not work? We we tried that in the Tech and Coffee Hangout. Uh, Duke Carrico was playing bass guitar in the, his uh, town in Tennessee. I was playing acoustic guitar, and then Jeff Zahas in California was doing some lead on his acoustic guitar. And there was there were some latency issues, but you know what? We still had a lot of fun. Don't know what it sounded like to everybody else, but uh, we got by. That's awesome. They're a great group. Um, Tech and Coffee, uh, that's their page name, right? If you just go Te do a search for Tech, T-E-C-H right. space A-N-D, right? Yeah, or you can go to techandcoffee.info, and you can see links to the Tech and Coffee Hangout there. Awesome. Okay. All right. So um, I guess next we have, um, oh, an exciting, I know all the viewers have been waiting for this. We have a, an API story. So while, while Twitter is pissing all the developers off, um, Google is, uh, you, do you know Google anything about- Google is also pissing all of its developers off. Before we talk what? about, the, well, you're always pissed off, but uh, th this Twitter thing, there's all these stories about this. I guess they're going to, like I use Plume. On one computer, I used on my mobile device. I use Plume, which I absolutely adore, to read Twitter, and um, I like TweetDeck on my computer. I could turn the stream on, and I like that. Um, Michael Banks told me about TweetDeck, and I like that because I, it can. It'll unlike the regular Twitter.com. It doesn't update the stream 
or Twitter.com doesn't. It, it'll say you have 17 more tweets. And then I have to click on that. Unless there's a setting, I'm, I'm just an idiot and don't know. But on TweetDeck, it'll, if I want the latest stuff, you know, the latest news coming out from these sources, then um, I love TweetDeck for that, and I love Plume, but apparently they're clamping down. They are. The Twitter has had an issue for a while that they really don't particularly like the proliferation of new clients. So while their, their nice open API was great when they were a small company and they were trying to attract people to using it, it's not so good now because, well, for, for a lot of reasons. Um, you get people overloading the API, you get uh, clients that are misbehaving and they don't really feel like, um, impl it's difficult to implement some of the things that'll prevent them from misbehaving. Uh, they want to be able to put their advertisements into the, the Twitter stream. They want to be able to have um, clients who they're working with so that they can implement all of these, these additional things. So basically, they're clamping down on how new clients will be using the API um, and similar issues like that. Pretty much, basically, they're saying, we used to have an, a fully open API. It's not going to be so open anymore. Um, and it's really easy for, for those of us on Google Plus to make fun of that, except for the fact that that's exactly what Google Plus has been doing so far. So this is not anything new to us over here. Okay. Um, and then, um, so tell us about the Google Plus, the API, API update, new features for apps. So again, just a quick recap. What APIs do is they give outside programmers a way to introduce features into, in this case, Hangouts. So the person who makes the Hangout lower thirds, for example, use the API in order to do that. So, so Moritz created that. He wrote the program. He uses Google's API. Um, there are several, you know, there, there are a bunch of other API developers and several other really exciting clients, really exciting programs and apps that we're seeing inside Hangouts these days. What they've announced is that there is a, a new update uh, for this. And what that means is that we get a whole bunch of new features that we can make available inside the Hangout API. The, the most significant ones of these, the ones that, that most people are excited about, are a bunch of new features to give um, some additional capabilities to app writers for Hangout on Air apps. So in the past, um, just a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the new Cameraman app that Google released. Many of those features are now going to be available to other app writers because the API is now available to us to use it. Things like uh, we're now going to be able to identify who is the moderator in a Hangout on Air and to give that person special powers automatically. Previously, we had no way to do that. There's also some new features to give us new audio capabilities. So hopefully, you'll see some games with some really cool audio coming out and some 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 other internal stuff which should hopefully make things work better and faster so yeah it's it's not news that everyone is always jumping about and looking forward to but the impact of it means that you're going to see more apps that do even cooler things and that's the important thing right absolutely um so that and I, I know you'll keep us abreast with uh um with these API updates. Um, all right, so, okay, extensions now appear in the apps tab with, you wanna? With promises of more to come. This is, was good to hear and a little bit of a tease from Google when they announced it. Uh, one of the complaints of people is that there are two types of Hangout apps. There's what we generally call an app and what they call an extension. And the extensions are things like Hangout Lower Thirds which just occupy the sidebar in a Hangout. Um, one of the problems with using that, though, is if you add one of these extensions, there's no way for anybody else to know that you've added the extension and no way for them to add the same extension. Uh, now these extensions are going to appear in the apps bar along the bottom, the same as any other app that might be running. So if you've seen, for example, uh, Eight Ball Pool, or you know any of any of those, those will appear at the bottom. Now app extensions such as uh, Hangout Lower Thirds and Comment Tracker should also be appearing at the bottom there. So these are 
important things. You know, again, this makes it a little bit easier, a little bit more convenient to use some of the uh, the tools that we have at our command. Okay, cool. Um, and the and and finally, the promises of more to come. Hopefully, are hints that it's going to be even easier to find these apps and extensions, to load them, to run them, because right now it's a little bit convoluted to do so. So we're kind of looking forward to just making that whole experience easier. What, what about that one that um, Streak um, shared the other day, the um, one that allows the, the um, moderator to mute um, someone and it turns them gray or white or whatever? Did you? That, that sounds like that's Cameraman. And that oh, was okay. uh, an app released by Google two weeks ago, three weeks ago now. Um, which gives some additional controls to the the moderator of the um, of the hangout, and that's a great feature. It, it's the the sort of thing that always improves uh, control over a hangout on air. And uh, in terms of the API, that's the sort of stuff that's now available in the API, so that anybody can write a program that works similar to Cameraman. So. Would I have to install that before starting a Hangout on Air? I mean, or is that just built in now? I believe that is either built in or that is available from the Add App uh, tab along the top of the screen. So if, if you click that, um, it should be one of the apps that is available to you. It's, a, it's one of the recommended apps, I believe. I actually don't see Cameraman in here. I don't either. And it was there before. We we might not be able to see it because we're not the moderator for this hangout. Yeah, that's true. Forgot it's available that. only to the moderator. Yeah, I see it. It's the first only one to listed the there. Um, and I don't usually I don't really use any of the apps in in the actual hangout because um, it messes up. They all reduce or they make the person I'm talking to bigger or smaller, and I capture that in the produced version. Um, and I'll I'll I'll, sh I'll show this for for the folks in the hangout. Uh, this is actually what, um, this is what I'm looking at here. You see, well, it's, it's messed up, but like if, uh, but there's a shot of me and then me with the person and then just the person. But right now it's all because I'm, it's in the shot, but that's kind of, um, anyway, just for folks who care if, if anyone cares. All right. So, um, you guys have been a uh, little private messaging each other. In, in this thing you want to talk about what it's called whisper whisper messaging it's it's what's been known as whisper mode uh so this is a way now as part of the hangout chat the the chat window that's on the side of uh, of every hangout you can now directly send a message to someone else in the hangout without anybody else knowing um for those people who are familiar with uh with irk uh it's similar to the slash me command in fact they use the slash me command so it's it's very similar. Um, is it IRC or IRQ or, it or is, IRC? It is I mean, IRC. That's how you and, and and anybody who tries to call it IRC is grossly it's, misinformed. It's really, Alan. So <laughs> Eric, Eric Rice and I had a debate on this one night. You are the first person I've heard it called IRC. IRC. <laughs> I've never Let, heard that before. Let's put it this way. I remember IRC when all of the channels were numbers. If well, anybody but else like Chi Chu, Chi Chu calls a URL an URL. <laughs> and I'm I'm not gonna argue with him. He's you know he outranks me on tech stuff, that's for sure. And is it my SQL or my SQL? It's my SQL. I believe it's my SQL. My SQL. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you call it IRC or IRC chat, Michael? IRC. Well, apparently you're wrong and I'm wrong and Alan's right. Yeah, that's a whole nother level of rightness. <laughs> um, all right, so that's kind of cool. You can, it, it's yeah, it, it's very similar to those commands. Um, and then the some I wanted to talk about briefly is I'm very impressed. The the first sort of mini network uh, online, I would say, w would be. Uh, Leo Laporte's Twit Network, and it's very good. He has a lot of good shows. This Week in Tech was it's after Tech TV was bought and, and destroyed. They, um, he wanted to set up his own thing, and so 
that he started this week in tech, which I think the first one was initially just an audio podcast, and then he started doing it on video. And but now, um, but his is tech centric. He wanted to be like a CNN. I think his goal was a twenty four hour, eventually like twelve or twenty four hour network that was live most of the time and was sort of the CNN of technology. And so he's had he's tried a bunch of different shows. Some have been hit. Some have you know been canceled, uh, like any network. But uh, HuffPost has started this thing, HuffPost Live, and it is, it's really interesting. Um, they, they have guys who I used to be on either, I've seen on like ex-Fox News. There's um, uh, D.L. Hewley, a comedian who had a show briefly on CNN, I think, or Fox. And um, they have uh, Dr. Um, Mark Lamont Hill, who is the... The guy always is uh, upsetting uh, Bill O'Reilly, and um, but he, he's great on the show. And and they have these guys doing segments on there, and they're short. They might do two, five minutes or something like that. And they tell you on the screen, they tell you what's coming up, what they're talking about next. And you can um, join the Hangout. You can, and then I think you go to a moderator who talks to you and you, uh, decides if you're going on the show. You can, um, right on the page, on the right, you can... You can um, comment, and they will r- respond to the comments as we do. It's really sort of like the best of broadcast television in terms of, and the production quality is fantastic. I mean, I, I know it can't. These are twenty thousand dollar and up cameras that they're using, real ones, the over the shoulder types with the, the cranes moving around. Beautiful studio, and so you're getting the best of Hangouts, and that you can interact with them. You're getting the best of broadcast television in terms of the quality, in terms of the, the quality of the hosts. And they're, it's ingenious because really they've got this great, they've got Huffington Post and disclosure, I'm, I'm a writer for them, a blogger for them, um, infrequent, but nonetheless. But uh, they, they've got all this content. So basically they're just they're talking about stories that are on Huffington Post. And so it's a way to, to, another way to use that content. And to discuss it, and they'll have a writer come on, and maybe someone else to debate the writer, and then come in from a Google Plus Hangout and defend or, you know, argue about a story. I think it's just genius, and it's. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to monetize that. I guess they're going to have ads. Who? How many? Any of you folks uh, seen this? It goes from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. I think. I don't know if it's seven days a week or, or what it is, but has anyone watched it? Um, or am I the Lone Ranger on this one? I've heard talk about it, but I haven't watched it. I I watched it for about 35, 40 minutes uh, this week. I found it quite interesting. Uh, They've got a very relaxed, laid-back set. It's very similar to the kind of sets that uh, Leo has in his uh, kind of the living room thing. Uh, there's activity going around. It's not it's not spit and polished, but it was. I thought it was well done. I think they're they're onto something big. I think it's great. And you're probably the only person in Lynchburg watching anything on Huffington Post. <laughs> um, <laughs> In Lynchburg, Virginia, um, but anyway, Huff Post Live, check it out. And they, what I like about it, 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 they're doing it in the same way that Sarah Hill and I do, where you, you we're creating a, a produced version of the, sh- of, we're using Hangouts as an element. Uh, they don't even run their Hangouts live. They're not even on air Hangouts. They may be on air, but they're not broadcasting. Um, so, what they're doing is, uh, they're doing a produced version in their own player. And um, if you're watching the version of this show, which is the, at the bottom with the like I'm in the blue screen and Bruce is next to me, that's kind of what they're doing. It's really neat, and I'm I'm so excited to see every every but, time I see someone up the game in a hangout production. Um, I, well, I get very excited about that. Craig, you were. But Dan, you say a produced version. Uh, what video are they using? Are they are they running the video through? something like a TriCaster or something like that, and they're they, going to have like 720p, or are they using the video from the Hangout? They're, uh, do, do, they're, they, they have real cameras, a real, I don't know, I don't think they're using a TriCaster. I'm not sure what they're using, but the studio and the camera set up, it looks like CNN's newsroom. I mean, it's, there's some pictures. Um, if you, you know, go, to, I, if you point, go to them on Google+, Plus, in fact, what I, I can't share... But my um, point is the the show itself the the video. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the video that you use of us 
is Google Plus Hangout video. Correct. Okay, which is at best 540p and probably not that, probably 320p. It's 360. Okay, so relatively low quality video. So no matter how great their cameras are, that's what they're dealing with if that's the video they're using, correct? Most of their most of the video is actually not a hangout. It's actual video in the studio. Okay, and so it yeah, looks that was like, my question. Yeah, it oh, looks yeah? like CNN or Fox News channel. It's real cameras, a real studio, real equipment. Uh, who's talking? So they're mixing that I, with some is... kind of video mixer, uh, whether it be a TriCaster or whatever it is, and then they're producing a finished video, and then they're putting it up on YouTube. Is that No, it's doing? live. It's live 12 hours a day. It's on right now. Huff Post, it's, I think it's, uh, go ahead, Harold, you had something, and I'll, I'll, I'll look yes. and get the. Yeah, I was, uh, well, I was just watching the Taylor Swift one, and that was, they basically, that was YouTube Live, and they incorporated a Hangout in there, and you could see the tremendous difference in the Hangout and, on the resolution when they switched it over to the Hangout people and talked to them. But the, the YouTube Live that, that Taylor Swift was doing was so clear, it was, the, you know, very, very, you know, seven, was it? What's the resolution of the YouTube Live 720? You know, high resolution. Do we know what, what the resolution of that is? Does anybody know? I don't it's know. Basic, yeah, it was, it was basically high. It's high def because it said right on the side on the YouTube it was high def. But what they did is they incorporated a, they jumped over to the to the Hangout and, sh and showed the individual people talking. And boy, it was extremely different in quality. Yeah. So, but I, I just think it's... Um, the way that Sarah uses it, the way that I use it, is as as a uh, Craig. It's it's a saddle. It's a set of eight eight nine satellite trucks for me in different well, places. Just, well, just imagine Dan when all of this is seven twenty p. If we can ever get get the bandwidth to do it, I mean that's the the big question here is can we get fiber run throughout this country so that people have the uh, bandwidth to do it? But imagine ten twenty years from now when we all have high speed internet and, and, we, and all of this can be at least 720p quality, even from our mobile devices. Um, talk about here comes everybody. Um, you know, everybody's gonna be able to be a, a broadcaster and they're not gonna be broadcasters, they're gonna be what I would call narrow casters, where they're all gonna have their shows with a limited audience, but you add them all together and it's gonna cut up the audience that the so-called broadcasters have now to where yeah, they won't be able to to survive. If a million people do a show that ten people watch, that's ten million viewers. That's what I'm it saying. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. It that's doesn't matter. That's what I'm matter. saying. And that's um, what it's going to be. It's going to be a whole bunch of people doing local shows and doing special interest shows and vertical market shows, and and they're all going to be reasonable quality because you'll be able to buy you know off the shelf cameras. It'll be great, and and it'll all be HD. Um, and there will be varying quality levels, of course. But like you say, some will have 10 viewers, some will have 100 viewers. And if you add it all together, it'll, it'll be a tremendous number of people, I think, participating in and watching this kind of content. Yeah, right now we have anywhere from 15 to 20 people um, live. And then it'll, by the, the time the two different versions that go up, um, it'll be over 1,000 by next week. So that's a, that's a thousand hours that people weren't watching broadcast television. Yep. Um, and you multiply this by the stuff other people are doing. You know, Bruce Turner, every day he's in a hangout. And the people who are watching that are not watching CNN or Fox or ABC. So um, it's Well, just, and churches will all be producing their own original content. Other nonprofit groups will be producing their own original content. Sports organizations will be, you know, producing their own original content whether it be a high school basketball team or whatever, um, they'll, they'll all be putting out their content that they care about, and there'll be a certain number of people that will care about that content that they're putting out. And, and so I, I think it's interesting times, and it, it's great times ahead for everybody but the uh, established old media. It's amazing, and it's exciting to see, um, and we, we should move to the next topic, but my, my final thought on this is it's the democratization of broadcasting in the past yeah yep. now any kid um a 15 year old kid who wants to have a show about skateboarding or whatever can just use their laptop and do it 
and uh, they they have the the same ability to compete for a viewer as ABC.com does. And I think yeah. that that's fantastic. We're, we're going to see just like stars were created on YouTube. Um, we're going to see stars using this technology and there, there will be breakout hits. Um, yeah. It's a very exciting thing to watch. And, and I get that's why I'm so excited about HuffPost live because they really have upped the game. Uh, it's the it's in my opinion right now, it's the best online streaming live thing out there as far as the production quality. It's fast paced. They might go to a boring topic. Um, I mean, they, they had this crazy thing on. I'm about to go to Alan with a comment. But, Craig, they had this, these people debating whether we should have a maximum salary, a maximum wage. Like, you should only <laughs> earn, like, if, if, the, if the CEO makes $25 million, then the lowest paid employee has to make at least a million. And, yeah. I, and I just, this is just nonsense. I mean, this, this works so well in Cuba. You know, let's go down there. <laughs> um, but anyway, it was just, and then they went to, you know, the, the, the thing where Jodie Foster had written this thing about how the media circus around child stars. And they just go from entertainment topics to hard news and the Paul Ryan update on taxes and stuff. Just something. And you see that, that they'll tell you the next 10 topics they're going to talk about. So you can kind of tune in, and then and immediately they, when they're they done, they chop up, that into a separate video. Do they, and they put so they put all these up as separate little little three modules. to five minute things that you can, and then have the right description under there. So for SEO, um, mm -hmm. we'd get more, many more. Um, it'd be people would love. I would love it if you could do that easily. I guess you could chop it up. You could certainly chop it up and make, but it's a hassle, and I don't care because we don't monetize the show, and it's sort of a volunteer effort, and it's a money and time sucking hole that I love doing. <laughs> But um, anyway, so, yeah, they do. It, it's really you should study it, uh, Craig. D you'll get ideas. Um, and I know you're a big liberal and you're just all about some Huffington Post and NPR. Actually, I'm going to take a look at it. Absolutely. Um, big government all the way. Yeah. Big, inefficient <laughs> government for take, me. Take more of my money. Yeah. Um, and waste it. Yes. <laughs> Build a bridge. Absolutely. Okay. So what we got, um, Alan, who has got the worst possible skinny font for his app. Uh, what we got here from George Cozy in the Netherlands. We had a question from George Cozy on a previous comment uh, asking if all the apps and extensions are messing up Chrome or is there no consequence to it? And uh, in short, we should just say that in general, there should be no consequence to it. These apps are not actually running as part of Chrome itself. These are apps that are running in the Hangout. Um, so and, and they're only active when the Hangout's active. They get killed when the, the Hangout quits. So you, these are not uh, Chrome extensions. These are Hangout extensions. There are Chrome extensions, and I'm sure people like Michael can talk endlessly about them, but I don't use them. So, Michael, did you want to say anything you about Chrome extensions? You don't use any Chrome extensions? I don't use any Chrome extensions at all. None? Okay. None at all. Wow. I don't blame you. I don't think I have any. Not even, I use... You don't even use a URL shortener? No, if I need to shorten a URL, I go to Google manually. Why would I need a URL? I mean, it's we'll so fast. <laughs> you just so click going on it, to, it's there. So but I don't, have to move, I don't have to move a, you know, change a page. You, you don't use Hootsuite, uh, Hootlet? <laughs> no, it, it, it was click that button? and you can share a web page to f four different social networks with one click? No. <laughs> I'm I'm I have no interest in cluttering up my browser any more than I need to, which is just about none at all. You're well, a developer I mean, and you don't I... use any apps. You make apps and you don't even use anybody else's apps. That's uh, odd. It's like a writer who doesn't read. And the dentist whose kids all all need fillings. No, I just you know, I there's no purpose for them. If there the... are two Alan. I have no purpose for it. I have, well, you know, you I, well, at least you're getting maybe he, does, maybe he doesn't, you know, I'm like, I love extensions, that, you know, for taking a screenshot, like I said, for using a URL shortener very quick, if very I want to easy take a, on I, Google Plus. I've got a two button command to take a screenshot. What, what, what I do know, I need but more I'm to like, do? It's just, but there's other, if you don't use them, you don't use them. Like, you know. I mean, I'm not going to tell you, you know, you're using it wrong. You know, the extensions are there for whatever you need them for. Well, I mean, I don't I have, have all the mine enabled all the time, so. I have never found an extension that I need. Bruce asked about Adblock Plus. That's the only one that I would even consider. 
However, I've had problems with Adblock Plus trying to do my daily job, one. And two, I actually kind of sort of believe that, you know, people should actually, who are trying to monetize the web, should get the fraction of a penny that uh, that's coming to them. Yeah, um, I, I don't use those ad block. I don't mind an ad. I mean, my eyes kind of glaze over them. On occasion, um, when I'm doing a Google search, Alan, on occasion, the results in the ads are more relevant than what Google comes up with. Yeah. The people who are developing the, ad, the keywords to, to get their ads out there are actually better than the native Google search sometimes when I'm looking for a product usually. Um, so that can be helpful. And I love the Google shortener. That's the app I use the most. But I don't use that many apps. But I love the, yeah. the little green thing. And if you're at any web page, you just click there and it gives you the, sh the shortened URL. Because I post just, I mean, I, I put out a ridiculous number of posts. Um, and so I use that a lot when I'm trying to do a story and I want to reference three different things in there. Um, so anyway, you, okay. I'm sorry. Who was saying? Uh, oh, I was going to ask, do you ever use chat for Google? Do I use what? Chat for Google. Chat for Google? Yes. You mean Google chat or voice chat? Well, it is Google chat, but it's called chat for Google if you look up in the Chrome store. You can use Google Talk, you know, regardless of whether way you're people on, can you know, Gmail me? or on Google um, Plus. I don't know. I just get, I wake up and there's five things that have popped up on the bottom of the screen. Well, that's because you wake up at 11 a.m. Yes, Dan. Um, it um, depends. I have a question real quick. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, I forgot. <laughs> now I want to get, and I'm going to get all the emails again about Pam's cat. <laughs> Tell us, because I know, but just so I'm, we don't get the, all the questions. What? What do you? How'd you get that? It's it's my Dell webcam um, software that comes with my laptop, and I'm eating dinner. That's why I'm a cat. Um, my question. Oh, I, Alan. My question yeah. is to Alan. I use <laughs> Watt W O T to. Okay kind of make sure that I don't go to websites that are um, mal malicious or evil or whatever. They have like a little green circle telling me, yes, it's okay, or red circle saying, no, it's not okay or whatever. W what do, if anything, do you use to stop yourself from going to the Chrome. bad websites? Chrome has this feature built in. But I'm already have Chrome, so I don't need what? I don't know. I know that Chrome has this feature built in, and that on the rare occasion that I end up going to a, a malicious site, Chrome tells me so. Um, I would point out that you might be going to more risque sites than I do on a, <laughs> what on a are you regular trying to basis. Say? <laughs> I'm not trying to say anything. I mean, I've, I've you know, seen your post recently, though. And uh, um, anyway, um, I, I use Chrome. Chrome has that feature built in. I haven't had a problem with it. What browser are you using, Pam? All right. Chrome. Okay. Yeah, you'll love uh, Ice Cream Sandwich. And um, uh, on my Nexus 7, it even has a uh, Chrome. You, it, it'll open up a porn window, an incognito Chrome That's session. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, Michael showed me that. He's got a Nexus oh, 7. Oh, no, Michael. <laughs> All right. So the, we've gone from the cat lady to um, photo updates. Um, photo this... updates, yes. Uh, we haven't actually seen any photo changes in Google Plus in a while, and they unleashed two on us this week. Um, the first is that there is now a slideshow mode. So if you are in uh, and if you're looking at an album or if you're at an individual photo and you click slideshow mode, uh, the photo will take up the your entire screen. It's a, it goes into full screen mode, which is nice, and then advances at a uh, steady rate, or you can use the arrows to go back and forth at your own your own speed. Um, this is probably in response to uh, you know some other social network acquiring such a feature. Uh, the other thing that they've now released is that wait wait now, before you move on, uh, Alan, can you can you tell us exactly how you use that slideshow mode? How we would do it? How you use it? Yes. Basically, if you are looking at a Google Plus album, so if you're at that, that kind of mosaic one that has 
uh, the layout of all of the pictures nicely laid out running down the screen. In the upper right hand corner, okay, there so will be. Okay, this isn't a... in a hangout. No, this is not. Oh, okay, I thought you were saying we could do this in a hangout. No, we've moved on to the next topic. We're now talking about photos. Okay, but I mean, I thought we could do photos in a you hangout. Can, you can show. There is an um, extension for hangouts that you can show photos in a hangout. And a slideshow. Not a slideshow. I don't think they have. I, I, I don't, don't know, know if if there is a slideshow in that version. Okay. But if not, you can ask Irvin for it. Yeah, um, I like the new slideshow for the um, the Google Plus photo albums. It is a nice feature. I tried it. The my favorite thing about it is the fact that it displays it in full size, in high resolution. Um, so it, it, one of the problems that I've always had with some of the, the smaller clips is that even if it was a, you know, um, 2048 by 2048 picture, even mm. in the, the old maximized view, it wasn't showing a full resolution and full size picture. Now in full screen mode, if my screen is that big, it will show it. So that, that was really good to see. Did you already talk about the fact that you can download the zip? Um, no, that's the next topic that I was about to move on to. Do you want to cover it, Margie? No, you can go ahead, Alan. Um, the other neat feature that they're now allowing is previously you were able to download a, a photo. If the person who, um, who owned the photo permitted it, you would be able to download an individual photo. Now they've extended it so that in addition to downloading just a photo, you can download the entire album at once, and it will download as a zip file. Now, you've always been able to um, download your own stuff and make a copy of your own files using Google Takeout, but that downloaded everything. And what this now does is it lets you download things on an album-by-album -album basis. And it's a nice, convenient way for you to, to download your own photos organized into zip file albums. Do you have any further thoughts on it, uh, Margie? No, I think you covered it. So I have a stupid question. Alan, you talk about some of these apps and stuff like that, um, but in a previous uh, conversation you said you don't use apps. So do you install these just to check them out and then uninstall them, or are you what? I don't install Chrome apps. I've, I've, in general, I haven't found a use for them. I mostly rely on other people recommending them. Uh, if I ever see a recommendation for an app that I, I need or use, I will do so, but I haven't found it yet. Um, this is how I use social networks, actually, is, is by listening to my friends talk about what they use and why they use it and assess whether it's something that I need. I do run other programs. I just don't mm -hmm. tend to run browser apps. Okay. Um, I, I do run, I, I should clarify, I do run Hangout apps, which are different than browser apps. Hangout apps, I have seen a need for. Uh, I use them. Uh, I develop my own. I make them available. I use others where I see them, um, where, where I have a valid use for them. I wish we had a Hangout app of Google Plus notifications in the Hangout. I have an actual Chrome extension app that works for that. So when I'm in a Hangout, I can still check my Google Plus notifications. But it would be nice for people who don't like, you know, say Alan, others who don't like you know, Chrome extensions to have that ability to check their Google Plus notifications within um, a Google Plus Hangout. Has anybody had a problem with notifications either not going through or taking their sweet time to go through? Long time ago. Not recently? I, I, I have seen a little bit of that and, and some people reporting that this week. Um, and this actually goes well into our next topic, believe it or not. Uh, usually that's an indication that they're making changes to the, the layout of the system and there are some glitches during the transition and they did make a change to the layout this week. Uh, it was a pretty minor change but a visible one. Um, if you're used to seeing people posting their location, the map that now shows up when your location is posted uh, is a larger map, gives a little more of the detail, the layout's a little bit different um, and you'll, you'll see that sort of thing. This also impacted uh, some app, some browser apps that rely on a specific layout for Google+, such as DoShare. Uh, all of those broke, um, and I believe most of them have, have gotten fixes released since, since it was a, a fairly minor change. 
Um, Alan, the, it's pretty – when you compare it to Facebook or MySpace before that and all the other things, it's really pretty dramatic changes I've seen here. Oh, we've lost Alan. Um, what do you mean when you compare? What do you mean? To when you Facebook compare the, and... the, the rate of change and implementation of new features and things like that, I, I think this is – they really well, put I mean, out a lot do you of stuff, mean? don't you think? I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, like, how long were you on Facebook? I mean, Dan? years. Like, when did you start? I don't remember. Several years, many years ago. I mean, or, or, very soon. I was a, on MySpace. 2005, and then, 2004. Not that early. Maybe, I don't know, six, five or six, probably. Oh, five, oh, six. I can't well, remember. When I first started, I mean, Facebook had changed over and over again. It was constant change so it's not yeah i don't really see kind of like a difference of google plus pushing out even faster than what facebook did in the beginning when it first started okay so if you're comparing like the first year of facebook to the yeah. first year of this yeah it's about the same um but i think it's neat and I, I, one, one thing i wanted to say uh, craig i know you, do you use Flickr or where do you store your photos that you end up embedding on your website or do you just put them out on your website i i use both Flickr and picasa i've used both for many years um for redundancy if for no other reason um i love Flickr because of its it's more like a database where you can really organize your photos so you upload the photo once you can put it in multiple sets you can tag it various ways you can it's in my way of thinking it's it's easier to organize your photos than than picasa there's been some people that have debated me on that but um i use both i what do you think my first thought when the ability to download an entire album which you can do with uh some workaround apps in Flickr, um but the ability to put up a whole album and you uh alan you can get the direct link to a photograph if you wanted, let's say, Alan, you wanted to, let's say I'm doing my news, a news story, and I wanted to use a picture from an album that I'd taken from mobile that was on Google Plus, and I didn't want to have to download it and upload it somewhere. I can reference that direct URL to that photograph and stick it in a WordPress. Usually, yes. Um, I have seen some issues where some... Um some other websites have trouble pulling that down. For example, I've, I've yet to get Pinterest to be able to, to pull a photo from a Google Plus album. I don't know if that's because of something funky that Google Plus is doing or something funky that Pinterest is doing, or even if they've gotten it working since and I just haven't gone back to look recently. Um, well, but, I've noticed you know, one it, thing because it I, usually I, works. I like um, our newspapers are on Google News. So when we have a story, uh, they'll pick it up, but I've noticed that if I upload the if I upload the photograph to Flickr and then put in the news story the Flickr URL to, to get to, but for the photograph for the story, it's less likely to get picked up by Google News. Sometimes they just won't do it. But if I upload that photograph to the actual news newspaper website it almost always goes up on Google News, and then I'll see the hits coming in. Um, but it would be there, neat. There, there, there are two problems with, with Picasa, with using Picasa for photos. One is you pay for your space. It's not unlimited space like it is with a Flickr Pro account. And so the Flickr account, I upload the full-size images. The Picasa account, I upload 1,600 pixels size because I'm paying for the space, right? Um, the other problem is if you embed a slideshow in your website using Picasa, which I do all the time, it's a flash slideshow. So nobody can see it on an iPhone or an iPad, any iOS device. It's still flash. They've not fixed that. Whereas a Flickr slideshow, their full screen slideshow, is it will work on on an iOS device. It, it senses it and, and it defaults to, I guess, an HTML5 slideshow of some sort. Um, and it I, will play. I imagine, I imagine that's going to change very soon on Picasa. For I would hope they would, but they haven't. As of now, it's still Flash. Yeah, it, you've got, everyone has to get away from Flash now because like on the new, well, they just, I guess Flash as of dead. the 15. Dead, 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 and, dead, and, and dead. Alan, and, and Alan, the problem that I have is I've got like 
500 of those flash slideshows embedded on pages, I, I'm going to have to probably go back and fix all of those because all the embed code is it's all it's flash. Yeah, it's a problem in it. Like uh, with the Nexus Seven, I it doesn't have flash, and um, really? I don't see it. Really, it doesn't. Problem, but well, then why would they still be doing system. Picasso slideshows with flash? Okay. Why was that? Why are they still doing Picasso? Yeah. Why stuff? would they if if their own because device Picasso doesn't? Is a, because Picasso is a dead end product. They haven't uh, they haven't done any updates to Picasso in a year or so, and why haven't they done any updates to Picasso in a year? Because Google Plus is the new Picasso. Yeah, but then uh, then update it then. Yeah, they should update it. I really do need to. It, it's called yeah. Google Plus. But I mean, yeah, if they're saving all our photos, is there a way for us to embed a, a slideshow in a web page? No. They're they're clearly working that way. I mean, that that's it's clear that that's the direction they're heading. I mean, we just got slideshows on Google Plus itself. So the next yeah. step is being able to embed that slideshow in a in a web page. The so reason why Picasa think... the reason why Picasa isn't completely gone is because all of its features haven't been moved into Google Plus yet. Well, I certainly so, hope that they, that I mean, they, they, they shouldn't kill it because you've got a situation like Craig. Can you imagine if they said, yeah. you know, it's reached its end of life and you have to go on your website for, for years and years of posts and, and edit them because the, the URL wouldn't work yeah. anymore? That'd be a disaster. It, exactly. <laughs> you just, I mean, come on. That's it. That would have a, a huge impact. Um, but uh, I guess I guess a lot of folks had the same problem with Google Video. I think Charlie Rose had years of episodes um, Google, Google has has no problem apparently in in dead ending stuff and telling people to migrate. See, that would just I mean, my gosh, that it makes you scared to. Well, uh, for years I've been putting links beneath it to the Flickr slideshow because I know knew that that was viewable on the the iOS devices, and I guess I could probably have my programmer just write a script that would go through all of those and just yank out the embedded. Um, you know, the embedded uh, Picasso slideshow. And I still have the Flickr there for redundancy. Well, you can hope that Flickr doesn't go away either. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, that, yeah. That's the problem with advancing web technologies is that they advance. Yeah. And sometimes things get And, of get course, open. they're owned by Yahoo. And Yahoo has a new CEO with a mission she's to make it the profitable. Staff. She's doubled the staff on Flickr. And oh, okay, I think that's good. incredibly encouraging, yes. That's excellent news. So that means they're not going to hopefully die anytime soon. All right, Harold Carey, you are a, an expert, a world-renowned. Uh, yes, I'm still here. Why does it not think I'm here? Um, I haven't seen that in a. Sh I haven't seen that in ages. It's a long time. Yeah. I don't. I don't it's think a, I've seen it's that. The longest thing now. I That's still get it. I still get the "Are you here?" thing. Um. Okay. So uh, yes, I'm here. Um, okay, Harold, you are, in fact, I'm not exaggerating this, you are a world-renowned expert on all things uh, Navajo, and uh, you live out there with those folks, and you have, uh, what's your website that is? Navajo People. Navajo People, and you have a Facebook page, and you have how many followers, or likes, or whatever? Is it? It's a page. Yes, uh, on my Facebook page, I have 2,500 followers, and on my Google Plus page, I have 10,000. Okay. Now, you t tell us what you posted about. Uh, you, you did a post in both places, the exact same post, same photograph. Uh, tell us what the photograph was about. It was about, a, I guess, like a, a woman grooming her man. Um, you want me to screen share it sure, with you? Sure, sure. You, you have the rights to it, right? Yes, yes. Well, it, it basically, it's a and it's a it's a National Archives photo. This is it here. Has it come up yet? No, you haven't shared your screen yet. Okay. Sometimes it takes a couple attempts to get it to share. Okay, I'll try it again. Oh, That's we it. had it there for a second. There you okay, go. Did it pop up yeah. there? Okay. Yeah, so this is a this is it was a National Code Talkers Day, so I thought I'd put up a post of the Navajo Code Talkers, and I put this up I put this up on Google Plus, and it got five pluses and fifteen shares, and on Facebook it got nine hundred and fifty seven shares and six thousand eight hundred likes. 
now you ha you would typically see similar, maybe not that dramatic, but you would see similar uh, differences in engagement levels between Facebook and Google Plus on your Navajo themed posts, right? This is not yeah. a aberration. Yeah, it's be yes. Like for instance, I just posted one that I just posted one last week, and I also got uh, two thousand seven hundred likes on it and three on Google Plus. And that was from a post I did last week. Now, now, Harold, how many followers or people? Uh, how many followers do you have on Facebook, and how many people have you in their circles on Google Plus? Uh, Ten thousand people on Google Plus, and four thousand five hundred on Facebook. I mean, two thousand, two thousand five hundred. So it's about one fourth the amount on Facebook, and I got almost a thousand times more hits. And and in fact, well, in and in fact, in one case, you got more hits than you have followers on Facebook. Yes, right. The uh, last, the, this post here that you're looking at right now, I'll switch over to the, this is over to the Facebook one now. The one that's showing now is the Facebook one. You'll notice that I have, at the top of the screen, it shows I have 2,822 followers, and I have 6,000 and 855 likes. So I have three times as many likes as I have followers on this particular post here on Facebook. Well, my first thought, Harold, and this is what I said before, I think it's, I hear you, and, and Craig can weigh in on this, because Craig is convinced that as far as normal people, they're more, clearly in my town, there are vastly more people using Facebook than Google+. The gap is is narrowing, but there is still a, a, a wide gap, um, especially if you're talking uh, non-tech people. Um, just yeah, normal. I, you know, I, I see no evidence that it's narrowing. It's narrowing, but it's not dramatic. If it is, narrowing. it's at a snail's pace. Um, <laughs> and I just posted the the parade that that you mentioned earlier. I think it was Thursday night. I I posted a, a posting about that. I posted it on both platforms, the exact same photos, the exact same video on both platforms within minutes. And and the engagement level, uh, there's just no comparison. It was just maybe one or two plus ones and, and I think no shares on Google Plus and, you know, a whole bunch of likes and a whole bunch of comments on Facebook, you know, in the hundreds. OK, so but let you, me say let me say this. Wait, 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 wait. You guys have pages, though, right? This is not your personal Facebook account, correct? No, it was my personal Facebook account that I posted it on, and it's my personal Google Plus account that I posted on. Well, in both cases, though, it it is and isn't a fair hit. It is a fair hit in terms that clearly more people are using Facebook than Google Plus. The numbers, there's no question about that. Yeah, but um, Dan, Dan. But also, how many, both but, of them have we, a... Go ahead, Alan. But but using Harold's example, he had a thousand times more hits on Facebook versus Google+. And according to officially published numbers, there are not a thousand times more people on Facebook than Google+. But Alan, Harold's following on Google+, is largely... Uh, is, is recent largely because of his involvement in hangouts and things of that nature. Um, and just through time, a year, his following on a Facebook is based uh, on that site is people who are specifically interested in Navajo things. It's the Navajo yeah, people's see you, page. See, you hit the nail on the head there. It's, it's, it's a, a special question. interest following that is very but, interested in Navajo a, stuff. But are there people following on Google Plus actually active that's following his page? If you had put up a post, Harold, this would be interesting. Hang on, Dan, Dan, before oh, you get to that, though. But because it's a been... special interest following on Facebook, and he posted Dan, on that special interest. But, Dan, haven't we been saying for a year now that Google Plus is the place where you go to discuss topics, where you, you find your those interest? special interest groups, and Facebook is the place where your friends and your family and everybody you hate is? Okay, Isn't that what we've been saying? Let's Okay, that, but it's different. It depends what you're talking about. The, for example, yeah, yeah, he, he, Alan has a very good point. He has yeah, a very but good point. Yes, he does. It's mainly, it's still mainly tech stuff and photographers on Google Plus. Where? 
Where? That's it? I I see way more than that. I mean, it's more than that. It depends who you follow. But listen, here's an experiment. I would like Craig and and, uh, Harold to post something very cool. For example, and Alan, tell me if this will... What, what your prediction is um the next time something happens like an update on the oatmeal the oatmeal guy who's doing the let's build a tesla museum okay totally go make, google plus go friendly on? post okay, okay well, i would like to see what uh if he posted the latest news about that just go to google news and, and type well, oatmeal tesla and the newest thing is he's raised five hundred thousand dollars in two days for this museum, I mean it's phenomenal, but I'll I'll bet you anything that his Navajo people Facebook fan club would not get as excited about that post as his Google Plus following would. If he looks for a really interesting with good art, so about so the Dan, Tesla museum Dan. and the oatmeal thing, so, or some so wait, similar wait, wait. Tech, tech So topic. you're saying so you're saying stack the deck in favor of Google Plus to see if it works. You don't saying? think that posting about Navajos and comparing the Navajo People's Fan Club to the general Google Plus audience isn't is a fair I, fight? I thought I, it was but Dan, yeah, but I saw Dan, it. That's, that's, but Dan, that's completely Navajo, neutral to me. The Navajo people have had plenty of time to find him on on Google Plus. He's been there a year. What, and he's what been percentage of your Navajo following, Harold? What percentage of your you've got They've ten thousand? Plenty of time to find him. The fact is, they're not there. That's this, the point we're trying Navajo, to make. Yeah, my Navajo page, my Navajo page, went up the same time as Google Plus started. I've been on Facebook for a long time, but I but I started both of them. Uh, I started my Navajo Facebook page and this page uh, on Google Plus about a year ago. But and how so, many Navajo people are following on Google Plus? Twelve. Oh yeah, this yeah on the with Google Plus my we have probably about on my Navajo page on Google Plus. I have about 40 followers. This so, is not so Dan. So Dan, Dan but I post so, on my personal page. So Dan, you just admitted that for a massive segment of people, Google Plus is a ghost town. So here's the deal. I mean, it, this is some, not complicated, yeah. gentlemen. This is not complicated. The early adopters, the techies, the 0.001% people are on Google Plus and they engage, they're involved and in, and in so on. The average Joe Schmo people out there that could give a you know what about Google Plus are not here. It's as simple as that. They are not here, and there's all kinds of evidence to show that. You know, mine mine is the perfect example of the average person. It's not a vertical like the Navajo example. Mine is Joe Public. I was out in public at a big public event with many hundreds of people. Local. I shot a bunch of photos of the, all these people. I told them where they could find the photos. I gave them my business card, which has a link to Google Plus on it and to Facebook. They had an equal How many of your followers on them. Facebook are people who live in or near Frederick, Maryland? Say again? How many people, okay, how many people are, are your friend? This was your personal or Frederick.com, which, which Facebook page? Well, it's my personal page, but I put a lot of Frederick.com stuff on there. May, but wouldn't you say most of the people who follow you or are friends with you there or who subscribe to your updates are likely in or near or somewhat interested for whatever reason in, in Frederick, they're Maryland? They're either in Frederick or they're in Sarasota, Florida, the two places I spend the most time. That's right. So you do a, just like just like Harold, you did a special interest post about Frederick, Maryland, and you're shocked. That the that your followers but from Dan, Frederick, Maryland, Dan, are more interested in it they, than your but, but generic wait, Dan, worldwide Dan, audience on Google Plus. Dan, but they had an equal opportunity no, to no, find the photos. Equal. That on, was not equal. That, let sure me tell it you is. Why. It's let like me tell if, you why it's not equal. if Michael puts a, a picture of his sister that's really cute, and it gets more engagement on Facebook than Google Plus. Y'all are going to say, "Oh, Google Plus is a ghost town." Obviously, it's a, well, his his friends wait. on Facebook are more interested in his sister doing cute things. And I don't even know if he has a sister. Oh, yeah. then, then we are Google Plus audience. Cats on Google Plus. Thank you. Missing the point. The point we're making is those people that were at the parade are not on face. Are not on Google Plus. It's as Most people as are not They're on not Google there. Plus, and the people that's who true. Are, that's Margie. Most people are not on Google Plus, and the people who started Google Plus to have accounts, they've abandoned them. 
I have over 6,800 followers on Google+. Plus. I don't get even half that engagement. I don't get 1% of that you know, type of engagement from those people. Most of those people are not here anymore. Yeah, the, are, that's one thing, that's one thing I noticed, Dan. We're small. Yeah, Dan, that's one thing I noticed tremendously is what she was saying. I When I was when I got up to 10,000, I was getting tons of people signing up every day. And... and when I and I was when, when I did a post, I would get 30, 40 people. Now, when I do a post on on tech subjects, really great tech subjects, I only get two or three pluses. So I've lost I've lost probably way over five thousand. You know, five thousand of those ten thousand followers. I was getting ten, twenty, thirty new new circlers, people circling me a day for a long time. I've peaked at like eight thousand, a little over eight thousand. I've been there for like two or three months. It's it's it boom. It just stopped, just like I hit a wall. Yeah, Nobody maybe. else adding me. Uh oh. Uh oh. How do you get, oh gosh. Why are we off the Why air? Guys, what happened? I, they just I, censored us because we were talking bad uh -oh. things. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's off the air. Oh, oh man. man. Just redraw that machine. Why, Why did it kick me off? What the hell? I don't know. It was ki oh, it kicked God. you off. It didn't ask you were you still there, did you? Did it? Did it? Did you click it? I got a I got a you're still there on mine too. I yeah. got yeah, one on mine too. too and I clicked yeah. on it. Um I have a That's, quick question. Holy I'm, shit. You know what it did? What? What? I joined with the wirecast thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. And that was minimized because I wasn't using it. So you didn't see the are you still there? Yeah, I didn't no, see I the see are you still there. there and even though I started oh, the broadcast right. from right. this green one, oh. this pisses me uh -huh. off. What the fuck? Yeah. This pisses oh, me off. I tell you what, this are you there thing is for the freaking birds. It should be smart enough to know when we talk that we're still here. No, no, Dan Dan joined with two. He had two spaces in the I hangout. Know, I, I was talking and I still got it. Talking does not matter. Jesus. It can be set yeah, up in a room this full is of people. Bullshit. It does not mean they're interacting with you. Therefore, I cannot discern between talking. Yeah, well, talking. In, yeah, most cases, in most cases, Michael, in most cases, it's going to be legit. In most cases, yes. My gosh, you, you, you're gonna you're gonna inconvenience the vast majority of people for that rare guy that's got a room full of people and he's just running it. Yeah, a lot of people not working most detected cases. by the camera. That's the best way to do it. No, it could be that. Yeah, that's yeah, but, he, his, yeah, but his Bruce, right. his his analogy that Can't. you have a room full of people moving around, <laughs> would still pick that up. All our righteous indignation is not going anywhere. All right, uh, I'm still <laughs> recording the produced version. Uh, so let's mm -hmm. before I. Uh, start throwing things. This is bullshit. Um, I have I have a stupid question about Facebook. You're gonna have to edit out a couple of those words. And uh, and, and, and people want to know why Google Plus is losing people. Oh and please! Why they're not going to win the no. war. This, this is, is a not perfect the example. Please. Because Dan's hangout crashed. Most people don't even use yeah. it. No, this, is, this sucks. You can't, do this on, you can't do what we're doing right now on Facebook. Craig, most people don't no, use it. You can't remember? do what we're doing now on Google Plus either, <laughs> evidently. <laughs> All right, so uh, Pam, real quick, and then... The okay, real quick. If as a, as a private account holder on Facebook, can I open my account to public and have people follow me like they do here on yes. Google Plus. Yes, you can. Yes. You can have, there's a subscribe feature. You can go into it and open it up and decide whether or not you allow the public to be able to comment on your public post. It's, oh, it's a great feature on. because a lot of folks yeah. who are like celebrities mm -hmm. or politicians, a congressman, a buddy of mine is a state senator. Um, they, they have thousands of friends, right? Uh, some of whom are just supporters, Pam. And, and but, um, and then you're limited to 5,000, but this allows you to have any number of uh, public subscribers. subscribers. Yeah. And then you can choose what level of engagement they're allowed, as, as Margie's saying, and, you, and, and what they're allowed to see, that sort of thing. But most public figures just put it out there. Okay, what was that last uh, debate real quick? And I'll, I'll just post this version. Um, well, the other one will work, of course. But, yeah, this sucks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complain about this. But, but, you know, all the discussion, the previous discussion aside, the bottom line is Facebook is going down the tubes. So I would not bet the farm on Facebook either. 
That's that's not the answer. No, you don't bet the farm on anything. No. And this actually ties into the other debate I wanted to go into. All right, go ahead, Alan. Hit it. Uh oh, go ahead, Alan. Oh, the big one. Uh oh. You're gonna go oh, yes. into the URLs. It's coming. Oh, yes. Your am. Oh shit. Yes. <laughs> anyway, do we have anything else further we wanted to wrap up on this one? Well, well, be while Dan no, goes and. And throw no, something against the wall? No, I, 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 what I was saying, Alan, um, I, I don't think it's fair to say I put up a post about the Navajos and my f Facebook following on my Navajo page Damn. got more okay. interaction. Clearly, a thousand to one is a dramatic difference. Yeah. But, but I'll bet if you posted the oatmeal story or some big tech, really cool tech thing that just happened, wait for the next really cool tech thing you see. That uh, but Dan, it right when it happens on fresh, who you are on Google Plus. so so Dan, and then compare it, you know how well, but Dan, crazy the Navajo people said, go about. We the... already said Google Plus is loaded up with techies and early yeah. adopters and all that. So obviously, that kind of post might get more play on Google Plus. And um, I think his Facebook page speaking. called Navajo People is probably loaded up with a bunch of Navajos. Dan, Dan. Sorry, this goes back to discussions that we've been having over the past year, where we keep saying Google Plus is the place to go where you wanna, if you wanna talk about subjects. You can't now turn around and say, well, it's only the place to go if you wanna talk about certain, certain subjects. subjects. Yeah. Some subjects. But yeah. only taking. Facebooks for the main group of users established connections that were firsthand. They were like, someone went to your school, family member, blah, blah, blah. So whatever you post that relate to them would automatically get more engagement. Now, Google not Plus, necessarily. Google Plus quick. did not start that way. Google Plus uh, is the tech people and all those people that jumped in early and that build and build and build. All right. Um, Dan, so, what is the and, URL and, but Michael, version? But Michael, that, that basically you're saying the same thing we've been saying. You're just saying it a different way. It's not your friends, family, and people in your community that are on Google+. Plus. It's exactly. other people that are all over the country that are techies or, or whatever. That have absolutely that's no connection That's the point I've been anything. making. You, you, you just made my point. All right, so, so we, point? Yeah. All right, we all agree. Alan, the produced version is... Um, it's not up yet. It's not broadcasting. It's just recording. It'll it's be just at, recording. It's not pro okay. It'll be youtube.com slash Daniel P. McDermott. It'll be up there on that channel. All right. So the last thing is um, you're, you're all excited about the vanity URL. So tell us about that, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Google announced this week that they have started uh, making vanity URLs available. So for, for certain limited, very limited right now, um, companies and individuals and, and named pe notable people, you'll be able to do something such as go to uh, google.com slash plus Britney Spears. And that's apparently one that's available now, so you can go try that now. Um, and they're saying that in the future, maybe, possibly, maybe, they guess, other people will have access to this. And they've been kind of cagey about, you know, who's actually going to have access and under what conditions and, and so forth. But it down, does sound like the, the age of the vanity URL is coming. And I would say it is unfortunately coming because I think this is absolutely a fiasco in the making. And I think this is a major, major negative, a major, major black mark on Google's part. Why are they going to piss off? Every Dan McDermott except one. Every Michael Banks except one. Because you know, history what? tells us history tells us that people roll with the punches and they get Dan McDermott, you know, one, or they get some other name. They just people don't care. They just grab whatever name they can grab, but it and won't for the be most so part, pretty. they get over it. And and at least it's better than giving somebody a twenty-two digit number or whatever we've got now. But you're not you don't give them that twenty-two digit number anyway. So my no, question you don't make do. a custom URL. My That's question what? is this to, to Alec. How can this hurt? If you don't like it, don't use it. How does it hurt by existing? It hurts by existing because now it means you've got a land rush for names. And in a year if, if you're and, not and using in, that, why do you Michael, let me finish, please. And in a year or two when all of the good names are exhausted, 
then some company is going to come along and they're going to say, well, you know, what do we get? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go for QQYZZY. And that's going to be our corporate name because that's the only one that we can get on Google+. So what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is that, you know, that might not be a name that they can get on Facebook and it might not be a domain name. And now they've got to deal with multiple brands in multiple locations. It actually makes things more confusing for them. Well, I always recommend to somebody that's locking down a brand that they pick something that is available on all the platforms and lock it down on all the platforms. Okay, so tomorrow when a new platform comes along, you're going to have to scramble to get it there. Absolutely. What if you don't? Then you're you're then screwed. you're screwed. That's right. That's what. But you've always got your dot com. I mean, you you've always got that as your main brand is your dot com well, website. But what, you, but what if you can't get your brand dot com? Uh, the same as google.com slash plus your brand. Well, first of all, I think having the plus in there is stupid because I, that's going to cause all kinds of confusion. It oh, should yeah. just be, I think it's, what, it should what just the, be google.com slash Britney Spears, um, first of all. Um, so they, they, as usual, they've taken something that is a relatively good idea and they figured out a way to, to screw it up. Well, it wasn't a relatively good idea to begin with, but ignoring that fact, they even screwed They made it even worse. You're right. Yes, yes. Um, but I, I, I still think that we need, we need some solution for this because I've gone through this many times where somebody signs up and I'm trying to find them because I got to add them to a circle because I got to invite them to a show and I put their name in the search. And if it's relatively common at all, I get 15 of them. And, and of those 15, 10 have no thumbnail image, including the one that just signed up that I'm trying to get into the show because she hasn't uploaded a thumbnail image yet. So I'm sitting here and clicking through and trying to look at the about pages and all, and of course she hasn't filled that in either. And here's where I agree with you. We absolutely need a better way to find and reference and access people. Having a vanity oh. URL is not the better solution though. It, How it, about the it, number? It did, the number is, is a horrible solution. But having a vanity <laughs> URL, it didn't work for Facebook. It hasn't worked for thousands of forums over well, the years. Well, hey, Alan, wait, back up. I use my vanity URL on Facebook all the time. I'll I tell people. But how many people do? Facebook.com slash Frederick News. I, I, I do it all I've the time. Seen, I've, I've rarely ever seen anyone, anyone use it. And Facebook I, I, forces it on you. No, I mean, I just do it to make it easier for the people to find me. I mean, they ask me. And, th and this might be another reason why I have more play on the photos on Facebook. They'll point blank ask me, well, you know, how do I find you on Facebook? I say, just go to facebook.com slash Frederick News. Why don't you just say, and they go can to remember that. Why don't you just say, go to fredericknews.com and that'll get you to my Facebook page. I could, and there's, you know, but it's just more direct. That's all. It could be just as direct if you say, go to frederick.com, fredericknews.com. Wouldn't it I be gotta have a link there though, for them to see, and they gotta click on the link. You know, don't you have that there? On FrederickNews.com. Oh, like well, and, and, and yeah. I might have a link to it from FrederickNews.com. I don't even remember now. You don't have all the Facebook badges and stuff for pages. You know, I have your, to. Um, I'd have to go look. I don't even use FrederickNews.com that much, but yeah, it's um, there probably. But but I I really drive the people to Frederick.com, and actually, once they're on my main site. I don't want them to go to Facebook. I use Facebook to drive them from Facebook to my site. Exactly. I link everything exactly. from Facebook to my site. So I don't mind them going to Facebook and then clicking through the link and getting onto my website, but I don't send them from my website to Facebook because all the content is on my website also. The photos, the slideshow, exactly. all no. that's on my website also. Absolutely. Craig, I'm with you 100% on that point. The problem is there are a lot of people who are using Facebook.com as their primary content site. That's not a good idea. And no, there are a lot not. of people who want to use Google Plus as their primary content site. Yeah, and that's not people, a good idea. Those are most of the people who are calling for these vanity URLs. Yeah, no, that's and not no, a good idea. That's not a good idea. That's why there really should just be better ways to integrate the content that you've got on your social sites onto your personal or corporate site. That's and, and and Google has been deficient in doing this. Twitter does a much better job. For example, you can go to Twitter and you can get a Twitter badge to put on your site. 
and all your tweets will show up on your website. Yeah. And it makes it easy for people to follow you on Twitter from your website. Yeah. And and that's that's perfect. That's wonderful. And Google Plus has has kind of hinted at these sorts of things. For Google I/O, for example, you were able to follow me from my website. You were able to follow all my Google Plus posts. Why haven't they released that system more generically? They haven't. Why haven't they? Those are the things. Those are the tools that would make it better and more powerful. For example, we have the Google Plus. They call it a badge. That means that from your website, people can follow you. It's one click, and automatically you are added to their circles from your website. They don't need to go to Google Plus. You don't need to go to Google Plus. It's just done for you. But the yeah. badge isn't pushed. It's there, but nobody talks about it. It's not well used. Why not? These are better tools than a stupid vanity URL. We should be encouraging these tools. We should be developing better tools. These are the better solutions. Well, but see, the other problem URL. that John Q. Public faces is, is first of all, they don't want to spend the ten bucks a year for a domain name. Google so, solved that problem for you. I mean, if, okay, you're right. This is an issue. However, well, I think Madonna can um, probably swing, right, but. But right now, this isn't available for John Q. Public, and there's no indication if it will ever be available for John Q. Public. Okay, yeah. so let's yeah. let's tie this up, and, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a different hangout um, for any of you folks who want to hang out some more so people can watch again. Um, and, and I'll tell you what happened. So wait uh, a minute. We, you, uh, okay. Keep go going ahead. Here. Go ahead, Alan. Nothing, go ahead. nothing. Why couldn't we have done that before we had this uh, this debate? But, no, I've got, I'm, I've got it recorded for the produced version. It's just not in that. Uh... Yeah, and I'm teasing. Keep going. But anyway, I think Google can do whatever they want. It's a free service, right? Absolutely. We were joking. Right. Uh, uh, Craig and Craig Ship and I earlier today were joking about this uh, really funny bit on. I don't know if he was on Letterman or Kimmel or whatever, but this comedian, he's like, he was on an airplane and, and they had some new feature, Wi-Fi, for the first time ever on an airplane. And then about 20 minutes, so everyone's like, wow, you know, for the first time ever, we're gonna have Wi-Fi, and then. Like t 20 minutes into the flight, something screwed up. And people are like, oh, man, stupid, <laughs> you know. And he's like, you didn't have this 20 minutes ago. Yeah. It's going through space. Yeah, I mean, it was funny. Yeah. And uh, it's this epic bit, really funny. And it shows how people are. Yeah, I but think it was Conan, wasn't it, that was interviewing I, him? Uh, something like it that. It was a riot. But it was a riot. But it was it was true. You know, like I said, we said, people are like that. We're like, and, and I said Craig's the worst offender and Alan uh, – you know, you'll complain about it's a free, completely free service. And here I am complaining because they shut my hangout down. Well, because they start changed the, something. Hey, Dan, start the new wrap this and start the new hangout because I want to talk about my video issues also. All right, let's do Your that. Video issues. Um, any. Uh, OK, what, what we'll do. So I'm, I'm going to thank um, uh, all the participants and, and the, uh, the, the, the the beautiful cat lady, Pam, who is uh, relaxing after her snack. Uh, that's funny. Uh, Craig will sit there and eat soup and. Um, he doesn't care, you know, uh, Michael Banks, who, uh, uh, are you in a chair? Or are you still using your big ball? Cause you're not, you're not, you know, you're still on the ball. How do you like it? Show your exercise ball. I'll tell you, he's in the best shape of anybody on Google plus and he's he, a soldier. he does not, he does not need the exercise. He's in the U S army. Yeah. Okay. So that's, he, he had to trained, get a bigger ball. He's a trained killer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he could be in, in the Navajo beauty pageant if he's a trained killer. If he um, can kill sheep. If he can kill sheep. Margie, always a pleasure to see you. You, you know, um, I have one of my followers is actually in Afghanistan right now, and he actually can, you know, post stuff and comment on stuff and everything. Of course, the civilian contractors charge him a crap load of money every month to do it, but he can do it. That's awesome. That'd be a neat hangout from Afghanistan. Can he get in a hangout? He's done hangouts with his wife and kids, but I don't know if he's if he's um, um, done any public hangouts. I'll ask him. See and, if you can get him to come on on Google Plus Week. That wouldn't that be awesome, Dan? That would be neat. Um, or to do a special hangout. Uh, but they'll to say talk what about time how, is it? Yeah. The technology, how they how they can use Google Plus yeah. over there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I interviewed okay. a soldier around Thanksgiving time, and. Um, the, the Pentagon contacted me and they do this for newspapers 
across the country, but they'll identify a soldier uh, like in Frederick County, Virginia, and, and it was for Frederick County Report, but he was a kid from Winchester and he was in Afghanistan and I got to, um, they set up some special comm link. So I talked to him, I was on the phone, but he was in a, in, at the base or whatever. And it was really neat because I got to talk, you know, what's it like, what's Thanksgiving like? And he said that they had a contest with the other troops where um, they could only use C ration or, or MREs, um, meals refused by Ethiopia, um, only <laughs> only MRE ingredients to try to make the best tasting dish. And, and you know, his company versus some the other companies. It was really neat, the, some of the stuff that they did to kill time. And, and it was uh, uh, brave young men. Um, in the, the, in the, the MREs are actually pretty good nowadays. They're good, I've heard, but uh, yeah. Michael, you could test. You could. I've heard they're good for a while, but like after Katrina, when people were eating them for months, they they get they get like, oh God, not again, you know. But I've heard that they're really good compared to the old C rations. All right, know, so we're going to exit. Right, we're going to start. We're going to start a new one. Yeah, we're going to start a new one. And then Bruce, thanks uh, from Lynchburg, Virginia. Always a pleasure. What is your sure. thing there on the, what's your logo? Oh, there's a cup oh, of coffee. A, that's a cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, I was like, what in the world? It looks like a bomb with a fuse, but it was a vertical <laughs> view of a cup of coffee. Alan Furstenberg in New York at an undisclosed bunker, a fan of Coke, not Pepsi. Um, thank you so much as always for being here. And thank we, you, are, yeah. uh, we are live every uh, Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. You can always watch us on YouTube live or on Google plus and um you can when catch we're working us when it's working when google doesn't introduce some new feature and not tell us and kick me out in the middle of the show um so uh we're gonna start a new after party hangout uh google plus after party in um just a moment but for those of you watching this version uh thank you so much we appreciate it and i hope all of you have a wonderful google plus week <laughs>